This program is brought to you by Emory University. My name is Catherine Wade. I am a PhD candidate at University College Cork, Ireland. I've done an, a BCL in law and then in NUI Galway in Ireland. And then I went to University College Cork and did a master's in law. And then I stayed on in University College Cork doing my PhD. I'm supervised by Professor Ursula Kilkelly and Dr. Deirdre Madden in the law school there. Um, I'm also part of the UCC Child Law Clinic, which is a clinic which does work um, in child law issues. Uh, before this, I was a visiting scholar at the Brochet Foundation in Geneva and St. Louis Law School. And now I'm here for two weeks in Emory Law School as a visiting researcher. So I've always been interested in medical law and bioethics and this began right from the start of my undergrad when we were doing in constitutional law when we were doing issues like end of life and abortion. So I started writing undergraduate essays on those things. I carried on then in my LLM and I did my thesis on refusal of caesarean section in the Irish context. And then I decided I wanted to do a PhD in the area and at that time there was a law reform commission report brought out, which was about children in medical treatment. So it looked at all the issues of um, adolescents and mature minors consenting to different treatments. And at the start of that report, it said one issue which we're not going to look at is medical research with children because the ethical issues are totally different and there's just so many different issues to look at that we can't cover that in this report. So I said, I want to find out what these issues are. And how they've been addressed in the literature and if people in Ireland are looking at these issues or whether it's just been a neglected area. And so when I started looking up all the issues, it was just very interesting to me. There's a lot of um, ethical issues like can a child be involved in research which has no direct benefit for them? Is that something that a parent can legitimately consent to? And issues about, well, if they can, what level of risk should be allowed to occur? And so I also looked at the regulation in the area and it seemed that it was quite underdeveloped. We have some regulation in the area of clinical trials, but outside the area of clinical trials, like for genetic research, biobanks, there's a lack of regulation in Ireland. And I was also interested in literature that linked human rights with research ethics. So there's a lot of literature out there that says that human rights has a very important role in the regulation of research. And so then I began to wonder if the link had been made between children's rights and paediatric research ethics. So I'd also become interested in children's rights during my master's and so I kind of made that connection and said well that would be something really interesting to look at, to look at all these ethical issues, to see how Ireland has approached the issue, to see if it is in line with the children's rights approach and if not how we could bring it more in line with that approach. So um, I started off looking at all groups of children in all types of research and that was really too big and so I have now focused on clinical trials because the issues that come up in genetic research are very specific to genetics and they're very complex. So I'm looking at clinical trials and I'm also looking at neonates. So I've just decided to focus in on that particular group for two reasons. Firstly, the issues that come up with them are very, very complex. So issues around parental consent. Um, obviously, neonates can't contribute to the consent process and so they're dependent completely on others such as IRB members who review the protocol. Uh, parents and those who design the research and so we're looking at issues of how to protect um, a neonate when it is so dependent on others and how to support parents or help parents to make decisions often in situations where the neonate could be premature or could be ill and they could be very distressed or the mother could be under the influence of um, pain relieving medication sometimes the parents might not be there if the neonate is flown in from a different area into a, a NICU so these are all the issues that come up in this area. And also the second thing is that um, I wanted to look at how to conceptualise neonates' human rights. And so in the children's rights literature, there's an awful lot of focus on uh, the participation of minors as they get older, hearing the voice of the child. But this was the, I suppose, the child who, who doesn't have a voice. And so I wanted to look at what it means to have human rights as a neonate. Yes, so I'm in the US for one month. I spent two weeks at St. Louis University Law School working with Professor Jesse Goldner 
he had a lot of clinical contacts and got me talking to doctors, principal investigators, research nurses, IRB members. Um, so that's what I did there for two weeks and I really wanted to come to Emory to work on the theoretical framework of my thesis. So to work on this issue of children's rights and how to use children's rights as a core part of my theoretical framework. So Emory is really the place that I wanted to go to, to look at my theory and to look at children's rights. And I'm looking at um, the US system of research regulation and the principles that are behind that system. So it's seen to be principalism, which was laid down in the Belmont report, and that's the influencing factor on the regulations in the US. So I want to ask the questions of whether rights have played an important role in the regulation of research for children in the US, and to look at how children's rights are perceived and utilized in, the, in research regulation. And so that's why I came to the US, and, and that's why I came to Emory, because there are really eminent scholars in children's rights here, such as Professor Barbara Bennett Woodhouse. So I've been able to go to her classes and have conversations with her, which have been really beneficial to me in understanding children's rights in the US context. And also, as I was here, I became very interested in the vulnerability analysis, um, which was developed by Professor Martha Feynman. I was also able to talk to her and talk to her about how I could apply her analysis in, in my thesis. So that is my purpose. So what has interested you about vulnerability theory? So as I read through all of the vulnerability theory, and I also went to presentations about the vulnerability theory while I was here, you know, the neonate really is a, is a really good example of the completely dependent uh, person. They, as I said, they completely depend on others to make decisions and to protect them. So they depend on those who design the research to do that in an ethical way, to have stopping points which are correct so that they'll stop the research if anything adverse begins to happen, to make a fair selection of subjects. Then they rely on the IRB members to carry out their job effectively and ethically review the research. And then on the last kind of step, they completely rely on their parents to make a decision which is in their interests. So, so the question is then, um, in, the, in the regulation of research, we need to perhaps focus on this vulnerable subject and not the liberal subject and move away from that because when you have the liberal subject as the, the center, then you start to focus on things like autonomy and informed consent, but there might be a lack of focus on protective mechanisms which could, could be brought in for someone who is so dependent like this neonate. And also, you know, the idea of the vulnerable subject constantly at, at risk. The neonate in the research context is at, is at risk. It's the example of the subject, you know, who's at constant risk from outside forces. And so I, I really think it could be really relevant and really could help to strengthen my thesis. So the next challenge is how to incorporate it in with the children's rights approach. So that is the next step that I want to move on to. from my experience in the US in general. I've learned how important it is to go out and really speak to people who are working on the ground with, with neonates and with parents. So both in St. Louis University and here at Emory, I have been able to talk to um, people who design research um, and people who look after neonates, people who sit on IRBs, and I've also had the opportunity to sit in on IRBs and actually watch children's uh, research being approved. And this was just an invaluable experience to me. Um, so that's one thing I really learned because you can be making recommendations for reform, but when you actually meet the people and they tell you the reality, you might realize that you know it wouldn't work in practice. So for example, some of the literature says that you should have an independent person there in the consent process so that you have the parents, you have the researcher, but you also have a consent advocate or sometimes it's called a child's friend. And so they would be there to oversee the process. But then sometimes you might be talking to doctors who say, well, sometimes research has to be done within a very short time frame. It, this baby could be flown in from somewhere in the middle of the night. And so sometimes some of those recommendations that you might make might not actually be practically valuable. And so that's one thing I've definitely learned is to go out there and to talk to people who actually work in the field. I would love to come back to Emory. This experience has been fantastic, actually getting to speak to the people who've developed these theories and who've worked so much in the area has been invaluable to me. Um, and also, everyone here has been so helpful and all of the people that I contacted for meetings, every person got back to me and were so 
so helpful and gave me so much information and gave me so much of their time and so it has been a fantastic experience and also getting to talk to other researchers who have used the vulnerability analysis in their own specific areas was really valuable going to presentations here and going to classes so here at Emory they really let you in to see how everything works and the way you can go to classes talk to students talk to the professors themselves has been a fantastic experience and I'd love to come back when I have developed my when I finish my PhD develop my work and hopefully have come up with a framework of how to use the vulnerability analysis in my thesis along with children's rights. I'd love to come back perhaps and you know share my work on that on that area.